Hi everyone, today I want to talk about creating the metallic shaders in Blender, but it's so hot I just have to keep my window open, so in case of any background noises Sorry for that So the metallic shaders, you may love them, you might hate them, but surely you can't live without them Metallic shaders aren't that hard to create if you understand the basics of the material creation process in Blender. However, I would like to go a little bit deeper today and show you how to create those three materials using just a few very simple textures. The shaders, textures and tutorial files can be downloaded from the link in the video description and now let's just jump into it. I will start with a very basic scene setup, so you can see we have three lamps, a shader bowl, but to set up the materials, let's switch to the shading tab here. Let's click on our shader bowl, go to the materials and hit new. So to create the very, very basic metallic shader, all you have to do is simply uh, increasing this slider to one. So the material right now becomes a metallic shader and with the roughness slider, you can make the reflections sharper or more blurry like this. So it's a polished steel, let's say. If we go down with the reflections and let's say change the color of the material like this, we can create something that looks like gold maybe. Um, so yeah, the most, most, most basic metallic shaders are simply created that way. Obviously, it doesn't look that interesting if you want to create something more advanced. So let's now add a texture. I'm going to add Chocofor Metal Solid 01 texture by simply dragging and dropping it to the editor. And what most people do is simply connecting the colors here. So this gives us a result that looks like that. It's not bad, but I think to get this extra level of details within your shader, it's good to connect this metallic texture into the roughness slot as well. So as you can see, if we do that, the material instantly becomes much more interesting. The reflections are differentiating within those highlights, as you can see here. In general, yeah, there's much more detail. What I also like doing is adding the color ramp node here. And by editing the look of the graph, we can influence the look of the reflections. So let's say if we move the knobs like this and change the graph look to B spline, we are able to get a material like this. Maybe let's make the reflections a little bit sharper. So simply by moving this knob to the right, we're able to have that as well as by moving this one. So what we have right now, we could call it uh, a steel, like a real steel steel material. And if we disconnect the color input, the result is also pretty interesting, I think. I would call this material and aluminum maybe. So the, the main difference is just the darkness of the shader. But as you can see, it actually gives your material a different feel. So yeah, we are able to achieve those two interesting metallic shaders with just a single texture and single color ramp node. And by editing it, you can see we are now actually getting this aluminum feel within this shader. Again, if I connect the color inputs, this looks much more metallic and heavy, in my opinion. With the texture added, we can also colorize our metallic shader. To do that, let's add color, mix RGB node, and drag and drop it to this link here. So by increasing the fact value to one and changing this bottom color, as you can see, the tint of our shader changes. So now it looks a little bit like brass or some very dusty gold, but I think the best results can be achieved if we mix two of the principal BSDF shaders. It's a little bit more advanced, the node setup will become a little bit more complex, but let's see how we can do this. So I'm going to import another texture, which is Chocofour Metal Solid 04, but 
we will do something different. I will disconnect our main metallic shader, press Shift A and add a mix shader first. Now I'm going to press Shift A again and add a diffuse shader, copy it, connect everything and change the colors of those two shaders to some very uh, yeah, different spectrums. So let's say blue and red. Now I'm going to connect this texture and what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to create a setup that will be mixing this main metallic shader with the new one I'm going to create. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the material mixing methods, check out the video tutorial that should pop up on the screen right now. And the main reason I'm using those two simple color notes here is they give me much better input on what's happening within the shaders. So how those two materials are mixed. Let's say if we separate the RGB channels from this main texture here, by the way, again, if you want to read, why am I re uh, separating RGB channels? There is a link in the video description on that. But if I use just the red channel, then add a color ramp, you can see by editing the knobs, uh, there is a clear difference between the reddish and the bluish colors here. So this will tell me if I connect this metallic shader to the blue input, it will be visible in all those blue areas and any other shader I create here will be visible in the red areas. So let's actually do that and see the result. As for now, let's just simply duplicate this principled BSDF shader. Let's maybe duplicate this mix shader so we can keep our blue and red set up for later. Connect both materials, plug them into the final output. And what you can see right now is just a simple mix of those two metals. We can define it by the slider here if we want to. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's plug in this color ramp input. And you can now see we have this very clear, well, not that clear, but it's definitely visible differentiation between those two metallic shaders, the one with color and the one without it. Um, if we change the roughness, this becomes even more obvious. So let's now connect this color input here as well. And let's copy the mix RGB node as well. Once we do that, this is the effect I'm looking for more or less. It seems like there's no change at all at the material, but as soon as we start editing the roughness, you will see we have this, I would call it, especially within the brass material, you usually get this difference within the, the polish of the material. So as you can see here in this section, for example, section in this area, uh, if we change the, the look on the metal, it those kind of areas become darker and brighter depending on the look. So I really like this effect. I think it gives our shaders much more realism. Um, what's also interesting, you can always edit the way those materials mix together just with this simple color ramp node. So you can see if I just edit this black knob, uh, this polished area becomes much bigger. If I move it down, it becomes smaller. If I change the graph look, we get a new result and so on and so on. So what I actually recommend doing is playing around with this setup yourself. As mentioned before, you can download the materials from the video description, link in the video description. But now let's create even more advanced setup. So let's say if I desaturate, um, yeah, let's actually desaturate the colors. If I desaturate those inputs, we are getting, well, a metallic shader. Maybe if we make this area darker, it will become, um, sorry. 
yeah, it will become something like this. So what if we would like to add a rust to this metal? Okay, I've just restarted my brain, so let's get back into it. To create the rust shader, I will import the Choco 4 Solid 03 texture and I'm gonna copy this principled BSDF node, connect the color inputs, and as for now, I'm gonna just plug it in here. So, this is the look we have. Uh, it's definitely not a rusty look. So, let's reduce the metallic value to 0.1. We still want to keep a little bit of this metallic feel within it. If we increase the roughness, this kind of starts looking rusty, but let's finally use the rendered view that I've set up from the very beginning so we can have a better preview of the material properties. I would decrease slightly the color of our rust, so let's add RGB curves and move them down. Now what I also want to have within my rusty shader is the bump, so as you can see I'm going through the vector bump nodes, just plugging the color to the height, connecting normals, decreasing distance to let's say 0.1 and then going down with strength. So yeah, now you can see this looks much more grungy and heavy and metally and rusty. Still, I would like to uh, play around with the roughness a little bit. So let's disconnect the color, make it dark so we know what's happening within the roughness setup. And I'm just gonna connect this texture directly with roughness, create a color ramp node obviously, plug it in here and yeah just move the sliders, maybe not the black one, let's maybe change the curve look again. If I move the white slider to the left we are getting much more matte material, let's maybe disconnect the normal for a second just to see the reflections only. So if I'm, am I happy with this result? I think, I think yeah. Let's maybe, let's maybe keep it like this. Okay, let's reconnect everything. The color, the bump and the roughness. So yeah, maybe it's a little bit too reflective. So let's decrease this shader. Let's also decrease the bump a little bit. So let's go with 0.2. And now this is the shader we are gonna mix with the setup already created in this tutorial. So let's move all those nodes here. And now we will have to add another mix shader plug in this entire input here and connect our rusty shader here. So if we just connect it with the output right now, we will have a standard mix of the rusty shader and the metallic shader, so it's not the effect we are looking for. And again, we can use this little setup from here to define the way we'll mix those two materials. So let's do that. I'm going to reconnect the blue and red setup again. And instead of using the red channel, I'm going to use, let's say, blue channel this time. So let's see how those materials mix. Let's add another color ramp node. And from the very beginning, I'm going to change, uh, yeah the look of the curve to ease because it gives, it tends to give more sharp edges when we uh, move the knobs together. So now all the red areas will be a rusty shader if we connect this color ramp as an input here. So let's do this. And now let's connect this shader as a, as a final material output. We can actually remove these mix nodes as well. But yeah, you can see the result right now. So I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. We have three separate shaders from three uh, different textures 
kept within a single material. So it's a pretty complex node setup, kind of like you know a family tree where you don't know which uncle comes from which parent and which cousin comes from where. Anyways, let's put that aside. What's interesting about this setup is that you can use those sliders here to increase or decrease the amount of rust within a shader. I think that's a pretty, pretty interesting result. Let's actually keep it on the ground floor as well. Let's maybe add a monkey as well. I'm gonna press Control 2 so we add a subdivision. Let's switch the shading to smooth by right clicking and let's now apply the shader. So again, I think it's, it's a pretty cool effect. Now with just those two sliders, we are able to change the overall look of this material. Um, yeah, so I hope this is an interesting technique, interesting tricks, and from now on your metal shaders will look better and amazing. So there you have it. I really hope you learned something new today. Please check out the Chocofor store for more free amazing Blender assets. Also you might donate to Blender Foundation to support the development of this amazing piece of software. As for now, stay awesome and see you in the next video.